Hi, how are you? I'm Mr. Muso. Today we want to talk about the World War One, the war that took place in 1914, whereby European powers they fought against each other in 1914. So we are going to look on how Europe appeared in 1870. Then we will look on what took place from 1870 coming to 1914. How was Europe organized in the 1870s? So we see that the Europe that we had in 1870, it was dominated by big or great powers. These powers, they were so, they were known as big. They were known as great powers. Why? It is because economically they had advanced, economically they had developed. So because of that now, they were known as big or great powers. So which are these countries that I'm talking about today? I'm talking about my dear friends here. Some of these countries included my dearest friend here. Who is my dearest friend today? I've got Germany. You are seeing Blaso, Germany. You are also seeing Blaso. Austria, Hungary, you are seen Blaso, France, or oh, Franco, Franco, you are seen Blaso, uh, what Italy. So, these are some of the powers that were in Europe. I've left here my dear friend Britain, he is not here, she is not here, in, in fact. So, these are some of the countries that we see that were dominating the map of Europe. There was Germany, there was Austria, Hungary, there was France, there was Italy. There was my dearest friend, Britain. There was also Russia. These countries were dominant forces in Europe around 1870. So having said this now, what happened? We see that in 1870, my dearest friend, Germany, and my dearest friend, France, they fought against each other. You, Germany, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, France, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we see that Germany and France were involved in a war. Boom, 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 boom. They were boomerang. They were boomerang, kicking each other, fighting against each other. Why did Germany, why did France fight in 1870? It was because they were not in agreement. So because of that now, we see them clashing in 1870 in a war that was known as Franco-Prussian War. Franco-France, Prussia, we are talking about Germany. And in this war now, we see that France was defeated. And when she was defeated, she lost the important province of Arousse and Lorraine. So the defeat of France, it brought embarrassment to France. Why? Because she was a big power. She was a great power. You can imagine at school, we have got John. So Azuze, Petso, Mati, Gim, they are known as big powers. They are known as great what a powers at your school. What happens? Mati Gimu, he brings a, what, a chicken in when he comes in the morning. He does not bring a lunchbox full of rice, but a lunch, he brings Nando's or chicken in. He's a big guy. Everyone wants to play with Mati Gimu. Then Zuse, when he comes to car, to school, he, he brings a car, you'll be driving. So he's a big guy. Then we have got here, uh, Kitsi. Kitsi, when he comes to school at break time, he removes the uniform, puts another uniform. He, it's so hot. Let me put He's, an, he's known, he's a big guy. Then you've got also my friend here. He's a big guy. Why? Because you've got the latest phone. Everyone knows about the latest phone. So they are known, they are big. Do you, do you learn at that school? Yes. Do you know Zuse? Yes, Zuse is Zuse at our school. So they are known. So because they are known now, what happens? One of the days, these big powers, these big guys at school, they fight against each other. Zuse, Matig, versus Vra. They fought boom, boom on the war that was known as the Franco-Prussian War. And what happened now, we see that this guy was defeated. And when he was defeated, people were now laughing. Yeah, from, yeah, Why? Because he was defeated. So he was embarrassed. So France was embarrassed. She was embarrassed after being defeated by Germany on the Franco-Prussian War. So 
when she was defeated now, she possibly was going to look for friends. She possibly was going to go to Italy. I want to be your friend. She was possibly going to go to Austria, Hungary. I want to be your friend. She was possibly going to Britain. I want to be your friend. She was possibly going to Russia. I want to be your friend. And by so doing now, these countries were going to unite against Germany and fight against Germany. So in order to avoid that now, we see that the Chancellor of Germany, Otto von Bismarck, started what was known as the Bismarckian system of alliance. This Bismarckian system of alliance, it was aimed at isolating France so that France was not going to be to have a friend in what uh, in Europe. France was not going to be a friend with Austria-Hungary. France was not going to be a friend with Italy. France was not going to be a friend with Britain and also Russia. So France, she was going to be alone. And as a result of that now, it meant that France was not going to wage a war of revenge against Germany. France was not going to revenge against Germany. So because of that now, we see the Bismarckian system of alliance being started by Otto von Bismarck. But this Bismarckian system of alliance eventually divided Europe into two dangerous camps which eventually led to the war in 1914. So we see that one of the causes that led to the war of 1914, it was this Bismarckian system of alliance which was started by Otto von Bismarck who wanted to isolate what a France. So we now want to talk about what transpired on the uh, what, on, on, what, what transpired, what led to the war of 1914. So we now want to look on the World War One. What were the causes? What led to the war of 1914? We are talking about world. Mindu said that so many countries were involved in this war which transpired in 1914. So we want to talk about what led to this war in 1914, the World War One. So we are going to look on the causes that led to the World War One. What were these causes that contributed to the war of 1914? The causes that led to the war in 1914. So we want to look on these what are causes. And our first cause is going to be known as the alliance system. Alliance. What is an alliance? It is a friendship treaty. An alliance, it is a treaty in which two or more countries come together. It is it is the coming together of what of countries. So here now we are talking about the coming together of countries. So here we are going to see countries are coming what are together, forming an alliance. So we are going to see Germany. Austria, Hungary are coming together with Russia and forming what was known as the a Triple Alliance. So our first cause is going to be known as the Alliance System. So we see that in 1872, Bismarck yet to approach Russia, he also yet to approach Austria, Hungary, and this resulted in the so-called the Dre Kaiser Band or the League of Three Emperors. So we see Russia, we see our Austria, Hungary, and Germany coming together, forming an alliance in 1872. And this was known as the Dre Kaiser Band or the League of Three Emperors. So when they came together here, they agreed that they were going to work together in their foreign policies. So the coming together of Austria, Hungary, and Russia, it led France to be isolated. So by so doing now, in the event of anything taking place now, it meant that France was not going to be in a position of attacking Germany because Germany was now in good books with Austria, Hungary, and Russia. Bismarck went further. In 1879, he signed another treaty with Austria Hungary, which was known as the Jewel Alliance. Jewel means two. So we have got Austria Hungary and Germany coming together, forming the Jewel Alliance, renewing what they had agreed in 1872 on the Dre Kaiser Band. So when they signed this Jewel Alliance, they promised each other that they were going to continue working together in their foreign policies. Then when this took place now in 1882, two, Austria-Hungary, Germany, 
and Italy, they came together. And when they came together, this resulted in the signing of the Triple Alliance. So Italy, Austria-Hungary, and Germany. Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy, they came together and they signed the Triple Alliance. So you are seeing that France was isolated because she was not having a friend in what in Europe. Since Germany was in good books with Italy, since Germany was in good books with Austria-Hungary, since Germany was in good books again uh, with what with Austria-Hungary and Italy. So as a result of that, now France was isolated. That was the idea of the Alliance what a system. It was aimed at isolating what a France and we are seeing that here yeah, France is what is isolated so as a result of that now France was not going to wage a war of revenge against what a Germany that was the idea of the alliance what system so having said this now we see that unfortunately Bismarck abdicated from the throne in 1890 so when he abdicated from the throne now we see that the Kaiser who was there could not continue with the Bismarckian system of alliance so in 1873-74 we see that France was no longer isolated she had to sign an agreement with Russia and by so doing now it meant that France was now having a friend in Europe then after that now we see that uh, Britain was the only country which was not having a friend. So she went on to sign the Anglo-Japanese Treaty with Japan. Mean to say that at least she was supposed to be having a friend. Was here isolation. She was in a policy which was known as splendid isolation. This policy was now dangerous. So we see her signing the Anglo-Japanese Treaty with Japan. Mean to say that at least she was having a friend in Europe. So when this took place now, Britain went a step further in 1904. She had to sign a treaty with France, the so-called the Intente Cordial. Intente is a secret agreement. It is a secret agreement that was signed between Britain and France. And in this Intente Cordial of 1904, they agreed that Britain was going to occupy Egypt and france was going to occupy morocco so we see that this was now uh it brought problems why because this morocco that france was uh going to take it was a sphere of influence which was wanted by what by germany so we are going to see germany later on clashing with france as a result of this issue of morocco we are going to talk about this in detail on the moroccan crisis of 1904 so we see that this agreement it was secret, secretly signed so that is why they to agree that britain was to occupy egypt and france was to occupy what a morocco it was secretly done they did not want this to be known to germany but later on germany knew about this i'll talk about this later on like what i have said so when they signed the intent accord it meant that britain was now having a friend in the name of france so we see that when they signed this agreement, later on at the Algeras conference, Britain, Russia, and France, they supported each other against Germany at the Algeras conference. I'll talk about this later on, on colonial rivalry or imperialism. So their support now at the Algeras conference led them in 1906 to sign the so-called the triple intent. So we now see that Europe was now divided into two. Europe had a group which was known as the Triple Alliance, which had Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy. This Triple Alliance was signed in 1882. Then in 1906, another group now is now there. This group consisted of what Britain, France, and Russia, which was known as the Intente our the triple what are intended mean to say that we have got now two camps now the triple alliance and the triple intended so we've got triple alliance and triple intended so these camps were dangerous in the sense that in the event of anything taking place if they either each other or fight fight against each other it meant that they were going to fight 
a war in these two camps. So, and this is exactly what transpired in 1914, the Triple Intente, the Triple Alliance. So by so doing, we are saying that the alliance system led to the war in 1914. Why? Because it divided Europe into dangerous camps, the Triple Alliance, and also the triple what are intended. And as a result of that now, it endangered Europe leading to the war of 1914. So this is our first cause, which was known as the Triple Alliance. Let's move on and talk about another cause. This cause was known as militarism or arms race. Militarism, we are talking about the army. European powers started to increase their armies. Why were they increasing their armies? It is because Europe was now divided into two dangerous camps. There was the Triple Intent and the Triple Alliance. So because of that now, it meant that they were supposed to increase their armies. They did not want to be caught napping or caught unaware in the event of a war taking place. So military, we are talking about the soldiers being increased, the soldiers being recruited. It is also known as arms because they started also to increase productivity of arms ammunitions were what are manufactured they said to manufacture guns to increase guns bullets were also manufactured why so that soldiers were going to use these guns they were also going to use these bullets in the event of a war taking place so that on its own created what was known as a war like mood a war like mood started to prevail why because soldiers were being trained soldiers were being recruited soldiers were being trying to use guns and by so doing now it meant that in the event of anything taking place war was going to our uh, okay and these soldiers that were being trained were the same soldiers that were going to be used in the event of a war taking place so the issue of militarism the issue of arms race led to the war of 1914 the second cause known as arms race or militarism. Let's move on and talk about another cause known as the naval race. Naval, we are talking about warships being manufactured. We are talking about ships being manufactured that were going to be used in the event of a war taking place. So we see that Britain started to manufacture, to produce the first warship which was known as the Dreadnought. It was the first warship of its kind in Europe. So when she manufactured, when she produced this Dreadnought, we see that Germany started to produce, started to manufacture a similar dreadnought that was produced in Britain. Britain produced one dreadnought and Germany produced three. So this surprised Britain. Why could Germany produce a similar dreadnought to the one that I what manufactured? And she went on to produce three. So Britain viewed this as a threat from Germany. She viewed this as a challenge that was coming from Germany. So as a result of that now, we see that Britain produced six, Germany produced 12, Britain produced 24, Germany produced 48. So we see competition over the productivity, over the production of dreadnoughts. So what are we saying? We are saying that the naval race led to a competition it created a competition and this competition eventually endangered war and as a result of that now the war took place in 1914 because of this competition of a product of, of a production of warships which were known as dreadnoughts so the naval race contributed to the war of 1914. It led to enmity, it led to hostilities, it led to tension between Germany and Britain, and as a result of that now, leading to the war of 1914. So the naval race was responsible for the war that occurred in 1914. <laughs> Let's move on and talk about another cause, which is called colonial rivalry. It is also called imperialism. 
colonial rivalry. We are talking about colonies. Yeah, colonies rivalry. We are talking about what competition? Yeah, 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 rivalry. I will rob you, I will rob you, fighting. So that is rivalry. We are talking about clashes, we are talking about tensions. So that is rivalry. Then colony, we are talking about what are uh, African what colonies? They were colonies. Then imperialism, we are talking about the conquest of European powers, conquering African colonies taking African colonies, subduing African colonies. So imperialism is the conquest of one country by the other. In this case, we are talking about European powers colonizing, uh, subduing African what are colonies. So here on colonial rivalry, we see that European powers, they clashed, <coughs> yeda, yeda. they clashed amongst themselves. They clashed over African colonies. Why were they clashing? It is because they wanted these African colonies. I will take you back to what I've said when we started this lesson. How are you praised? How are you present? Thank you so much for tuning in. So we started by saying that in 1870, France and Germany were involved in a war. And this war was known as the Franco-Prussian War. So we are seeing that France and Germany, they are clashing in 1870. So when they clashed now, France was defeated. And when she was defeated, she came to Africa so that she could redeem that pride that she lost when she was defeated by Germany. Remember, she was a big country. She was a big guy. So if a big guy is defeated at school, it means that people will be laughing. Yeah, Akaro, why he was beaten? Yeah. So in order to redeem your pride, what happens? You go to the neighboring school and beat her in form one and rover in form one. So so that you redeem your pride, so that you redeem your what your prestige. So that is what France did. She started to occupy colonies in Africa. She started to occupy so many areas in Africa. She occupied Niger. She occupied Ivory Coast. She occupied Senegal. So when she was occupying these colonies, other countries in Europe, they thought that they were being left behind. So because of that now, they also started to come to Africa and they began to occupy African colonies. But they eventually Eventually clashed among themselves over these African colonies. For example, Germany clashing with France over Morocco. We are going to talk about this on the Moroccan crisis. For example, uh, Italy clashing with France over Italy. For example, we are also going to see that France clashed with Belgium over Congo. So we see European powers clashing over uh, these African what are colonies. So this is what is called what a colonial what rivalry. European powers clashing amongst themselves over colonies in what in Africa. So we see that in 1904, Britain and France signed the Intente Codile. When they signed the Intente Codile, Britain was going to take Egypt and France was going to occupy Morocco. But Morocco was also wanted by Germany. So because of that now, we see that it led to a crisis which was known as the Moroccan crisis of 1905. So colonial rivalry, under colonial rivalry, we talk about the Moroccan crisis. What happened? Germany heard about the signing of the Intente Godile. So when she heard about the signing of so that led Germany to call for a conference to discuss about the issue of Morocco. So we see that this resulted in the so-called the Moroccan crisis of 1905. So we see that the European powers, they met at Algeciras. Who were these countries that met at Algeciras? We have talked about France, we have talked about Britain, we have talked about Russia, Germany was there, Austria-Hungary, then Spain, Algeciras is in Spain. So they discussed the issue of Morocco on the so-called the Moroccan crisis. So when they met at Algeciras now, it was decided that Morocco was supposed to be administered by France. Britain, France, and Russia, they united and they agreed that 
France was supposed to administer Morocco. Then the other countries were supposed to be responsible for the borders of Morocco. They were given the mandate to control the borders of Morocco. So here on the Algeria's conference on the Moroccan crisis, we see that Germany was stabbed at the back. We see that Britain, France, and Russia united. Their union later on, it resulted in the signing of the triple intent that we have talked about. So the Moroccan crisis took place. Why? It was caused by the signing of the intent Cordial of 1904. And that on its own led the case of Germany to call for a conference to discuss about the issue of what of Morocco so that on its own led Morocco eventually to be mandated to be uh, what controlled by France on the Algeria's what conference so under the colonial rivalry we talk about the Moroccan crisis of 1905 then we also talk about the second Moroccan crisis of 1911. There were problems in Morocco in 1911. So when these problems took place in Morocco, since France was given Morocco on the Algeria's conference, uh, we see that she had to send the troops to Morocco to protect the French citizens who were in Morocco. So when that took place now, we see that Germany dispatched a gunboat panther to Agada in Morocco. So when that took place now, it meant that there were now French forces and also German forces in Morocco. And a possibility of a war was bound to uh, okay. But now Germany, sensing that war was bound to okay, she had to withdraw from this uh, what, uh, what, from Morocco. She was not prepared for the war and she withdrew from Morocco. And when she withdrew from Morocco, she was embarrassed. She was compensated with other areas. But that incident brought embarrassment to Germany. But however, it increased hostilities between Germany and what and France. So we see again under colonial rivalry, uh, we talk about the second Moroccan crisis of 1911 the issue of colonial rivalry so we are seeing that european powers by clashing over colonies in africa it led to hostilities it created tensions it created enmity and it was this enmity that led to the war in 1914 so colonial rivalry was responsible for the war that took place in 1914 Let's move on and talk about another cause, which is called nationalism. Nationalism is a word from the word national. It comes from the word national. So here national, we are talking about the country of origin. We are talking about specifically Turkey. Uh, or which or uh, this area which was known as the Ottoman Empire or the Sikhmen of Europe. Turkey was known as the Ottoman Empire. She was known as the Sikhmen of Europe. So because of that now, the people who were in Turkey, they were of different origins. They had different languages. They were different nationalities. So because of that now, the people in Turkey, they were always rising. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why were they? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was because they wanted to be independent from Turkey. So their risings, their uh, uh, risings, they are known as nationalism. Those people wanted nationalistic feelings to be what upholded, to be considered. So that is where uh, this name, uh, this word nationalism comes from. So the areas that were in Turkey, they were known as the Balkan what uh, areas. These Balkan areas included Serbia. There was an area which was known as Serbia, a state which was known as Serbia in Turkey. It was a Balkan area. There was an area which was known as Bulgaria. There was an area which was known as Greece. There was an area which was known as Albania. There was an area which was known as Romania. There was an area which was known as Montenegro. There was an area which was known as Bosnia and Herzegovina. There was also an area which was known as Macedonia. And we see that these areas were referred to as 
the broken states or the broken what are areas. So these are areas in Turkey. So we are saying that these people in Turkey, they were always revolting against Turkey. They were always arising against Turkey. They were always rebelling against Turkey. So because of this now, we come to this cause which is known as what nationalism they wanted people of who spoke the same language people who had the same religion people with the same culture to come together so that on its own is called what nationalism it is also called pan slavism the idea of togetherness so these problems as they were taking place now in Turkey we see European powers intervening in Turkey so when they intervened in Turkey they ended up clashing amongst themselves for example we see that in 1908 a crisis took place which was known as the Bosnian crisis here there were problems in Bosnia so when there were problems in Bosnia Austria Hungary deployed troops to Bosnia and when that took place Russia also deployed troops to Austria Hungary uh, Russia also deployed troops what to Bosnia so we now see that we've got troops from Austria Hungary we've got troops from Russia in Bosnia which is in Turkey so because of that now war was bound to take place between uh, what uh, Austria Hungary and what and Russia over under this area which was in Turkey, which was known as Bosnia. But Russia, again, sensing that war was bound to take place now, she moved out of Bosnia and Austria Hungary to annex what a Bosnia on the Bosnian crisis of 1908. But Russia was so much angered. Why? Because she also wanted what a Bosnia. So we see enmity being created between Austria Hungary and Russia over this area which was in Turkey, over this area which was in the Ottoman Empire known as the Bosnian. So the Bosnian crisis now led to tension. It created to tension, it created to hostilities leading to the war of 1940. There was also another problem that took place in Turkey. And this problem now, we see that it was known as the first Balkan crisis of 1912 and the second Balkan crisis of 1913. In 1912, we see that the Balkan states, these Balkan states that I've talked about, they formed what was known as the Balkan League, the first Balkan League. We are talking about Serbia, we are talking about what a Greece. They formed Bulgaria, they formed the first Balkan League. When they formed the first Balkan League, they attacked Turkey. Turkey was defeated, and when she was defeated, now we see the big powers again meeting so that they would uh, deliberate, so that they would solve this problem of Turkey. And when they met here, uh, Serbia and Greece, they were made to lose the areas that they'd acquired after defeating what are taken. But nothing was done to Bulgaria. But Bulgaria now, we see that she was supported by the members of the Triple Alliance. We are talking about Austria, Hungary, and what, and Germany. And Serbia and Greece were supported by the members of the Triple Alliance, Triple What Intent. We're talking about Britain, Russia, and France. So they were angered, the members of the Triple uh, What Intent. Why? Because their friends, we're talking about Serbia and Greece, were made to lose the areas that they'd acquired after defeating what attack. So here we are seeing again enmity coming in here between the members of the Triple Alliance and the members of the Triple Intent over areas in Turkey, over areas in the Ottoman Empire. So here on the first Balkan crisis now, we are seeing clashes, hostilities taking place between the members of the Triple Alliance and the members of the uh, Triple Intent. So this issue of nationalism, it led to the war. In 1913, the second Balkan crisis again took place. Why? It is because Serbia went to Bulgaria Serbia, Greece, they formed the Second Balkan League. They went to Bulgaria demanding to be given a part of Macedonia. Why? Because Bulgaria had acquired Macedonia when they fought against take on the First Balkan War a crisis. Bulgaria refused and this led Serbia to form the Second Balkan League. Then they attacked what uh, Bulgaria. Bulgaria was defeated and we see the allied power, we see the, 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 the big powers again meeting and when they met now, Bulgaria lost Macedonia and this pleased the members of the Triple Intent. Why? because their friends on the first Balkan League lost their areas. But here we see the members of the Triple Alliance, Germany, Austria, Hungary, being angered. Why? Because their friend Bulgaria now lost Macedonia. So we are seeing tensions. We are seeing hostilities uh, developing now between the members of the Triple Alliance and the members of the Triple Intent. And these hostilities created 
our serious differences which led to the war of 1914. So the first Balkan, uh, the, the, the issue of nationalism, it led to the war in 1914. The immediate cause of the World War I was known as the Sarajevo incident or the Sarajevo assassination. What happened here on the Sarajevo assassination? It is because of what we have talked about on the Bosnian water crisis. We have talked about what the Bosnian water crisis. What happened? We see that Austria Hungary had annexed Bosnia in 1908. So we see the leader of Austria Hungary, Ajuk Francis Ferdinand, visiting the capital city of Bosnia. The capital city of Bosnia was known as Sarajevo. Sarajevo. So why did he visit this capital city of Bosnia, uh, Sarajevo? It is because Austria, Austria-Hungary had annexed uh, what, uh, Bosnia in 1908. So we see Francis Ferdinand together with the wife Sofia visiting what, Sarajevo. So when they visit Sarajevo, their visit was not welcome. So this led Gravillo principle of the black jack or the black jack, uh, black hand to assassinate uh, a Duke Francis Ferdinand together with Sophia. They were killed. So when they were killed, Ostranger demanded an explanation on how their leader died. But now we see that they were not given a proper explanation. So this led Ostranger to send an ultimatum to Serbia, and this ultimatum was supposed to be answered within 48 hours, but Serbia could not uh, answer the ultimatum or uh, respond to the demands or accept the demands that were in the ultimatum. So because of that now, we see Austria-Hungary going to Germany. She, when she went to Germany, she had to seek for assurance whether Germany was going to support her in the event of this war taking place. Germany promised that a knight in the shining armor was going to be found by her side. Meaning to say that Austria-Hungary was given a blank check. She was going to be supported by Germany in the event of this war taking place. So we see that after being given that assurance, Austria-Hungary declared war against what uh, Serbia. And when she declared war against Serbia, the friends of Serbia, they supported her. Yeah. Who were the friends of Serbia? We have talked about Britain, we have talked about France, we have talked about Russia, the members of the triple intent. So they supported what uh, Serbia. And by so doing now, we see Austria-Hungary supporting what uh, we see uh, uh, Germany supporting Austria-Hungary and that marked the beginning of the World War One. So the Sarajevo incident was the immediate cause which sparked which led to the war of 1914. So what can we say? We are saying that the issue of our alliances led to the war of 1914. Militarism led to the war of 1914. Naval race led to the war of 1914. Colonial rivalry led to the war of 1914. Then we have talked about this issue of nationalism. It led to the war of 1914. Then the immediate cause of the war was the Sarajevo incident, the Sarajevo assassination, which eventually led to the war of 1914. So that is is all that we have on the World War One. Thank you so much. Cheers. I'm Mr. Musso.